What's going on guys? Welcome to Everything Always. My name is Michael Roman. Apologies last night if you stopped by the channel for our normal weekly watch party. My internet did not want to cooperate. I've been streaming live on Twitch for about a year now and although I'm fairly new to the YouTube streaming platform, not the first time this has happened so all apologies. Hopefully that won't happen again. I will see you next week. Regardless, we have to talk about the ending to episode 4. Probably the most shocking ending I think any of us have seen to a Marvel project in a long time, leaving a lot of us to actually ask, did they really just go there? In a moment that reminded me of a series like The Boys, we gotta talk about what we watched happen at the end of the fourth episode of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. John Walker kills someone in front of a ton of civilians who all have him on camera, what the implication is for the future of this character and the series, and of course, what this episode was all about at its root. Asking the question, what does it really mean to be Captain America? And they used parallelism the entire episode with characters past and present to make arguments on both sides. We're going to break down the ending of episode four, what it means for these last two episodes coming up for the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. But first, if you could grab the subscribe button, we're still giving away a PlayStation 5 now at 900,000 subscribers. We just announced the 800k winner last week. We're also giving away Disney Plus subscriptions every week while the shows are live. We'll announce a new winner for that at the end of this. If you want to be entered to win, all you have to do, hit the sub button, leave a comment down below, and if you want, stick around to the end of the video. We'll get into all the giveaway stuff again there. So it feels impossible to talk about this last scene without all the dialogue and exposition that led up to it because we got everybody's clear idea. Zemo, Carly Morgenthau, Falcon, everybody weighed in on what it meant to be a super soldier. And it was funny, it happened to be Bucky who was the one that that brought up that Steve Rogers was uncorrupted, even though Zemo's point was almost foolproof. He pointed out he may be the anomaly, has there never been another Steve Rogers? Well, we get the poignant answer at the end of the episode, when the guy who's supposed to be the government-sanctioned filling in for Steve Rogers decides to kill a helpless super soldier, super soldier, yes, but a helpless person in front of a million civilians, well, not a million, okay, so there's probably a couple hundred, but they all have my camera on different angles, killing this guy out of rage because they killed his partner, Hoskins. Now, it's crazy to me that they decided to kill Battlestar this early in the series. Uh, honestly, he means a lot to John Walker's character. Um, they have a lot of adventures, quote unquote, to go on. So the fact that they decided to kill him off creatively, I think was a good decision. And the reason that they did this is because it's early in Steve Rogers, quote unquote, paralleled story. And in the same way that he loses Bucky, they wanted to make sure to have that same loss affect John Walker. And so I think they made a great decision there in killing his character because it was what they needed to justify Walker going over the edge. Funnily enough, last episode, I said that we were kind of seeing him on the verge of snapping, almost having a Homelander moment. I literally said that. If you haven't watched a series called The Boys, I highly recommend it over on Amazon. It is excellent. Uh, there was a scene in the last season when Homelander snaps and basically Cyclopses or I guess Superman's the entire crowd killing hundreds of civilians. Now that is a uh, could have been situation. It snaps back to the moment where he's about to snap. He's on stage in front of a bunch of people and embarrassed. He ends up just flying off instead of doing that. But the way that they shot the scene, that happens first. So you think he snapped and did it. And then they show you that that was just a what if scenario. Here, I had that exact same shock and disbelief when I watched John Walker kill this guy on camera. What does that mean now for him going forward in the series? Obviously, he can't be Captain America anymore. So the idea that John Walker took the super soldier serum, it's not clear at first, right? He, he uses his hearing to hear someone in the other room or on the other side of the building, you're like, huh, what happened here? And then you see the shield go into the wall and you're like, wait a minute. And they, they stick on that. And you're like, well, is he really that strong? And then you see him kick the guy down the hall and bend the steel. If that was lost on you, he definitely took the super soldier serum after that conversation with Hoskins. And now all of a sudden, because it's enhanced what he is and his natural inclination, the question becomes, would he have killed this guy if he hadn't have taken the serum? So the serum that granted him the super strength to be able to fight these super soldiers in the first place 
may have put him in a situation where he couldn't control his rage and ended up killing this guy. So as it sits right now, at the very least, he can't be Captain America anymore and probably will end up being court-martialed and or be on the run as a war criminal. Remember, Sam made sure to point out a couple of episodes ago that they were operating under different rules of engagement because they're directly related to the military. And at the end of last episode, uh, Walker made sure to say he didn't think they'd care about the how as long as they got it done. Well, they're going to care about the how now, and they were off the reservation acting on their own, which really makes me wonder why he was in the full Captain America garb. That's not very inconspicuous. Either way, he's taken the super soldier serum at this point. So if he chooses to be an anti-hero, if this leads to some sort of him donning his own U.S. agent on the run, doing his own thing, sort of the same way that Captain America went on to do his own thing, but... You know, now again, the parallel runs exactly the same, and that's what they used during this episode in its entirety to keep bringing up different characters' opinions about what it meant to be a super soldier. Does that lead to supremacy or not? The idea that you could amass an army of super soldiers, and that's what the Avengers were, puts you in a position where no one can compete against you. And look, this isn't new to the MCU. This has been brought up a couple of times. It was the whole basis for Civil War when they brought up the Sokovia Accords, and this stretches even further back to Iron Man 2 at the beginning of the film when they think that Iron Man's quote-unquote weapon should sort of be a part of national defense. They've been talking about what this power actually means, but I love that this show is calling into question how we ended up with a group of the Avengers where we sort of took for granted that they would always want to do the right thing. A lot of people out there are corruptible. If you have other super soldiers running around, then it's going to lead to a lot more likely you're going to have super villains. And who can deny that this was at the heart of Captain America Winter Soldier, which no one can deny that the show has had a heavy influence from asking if you had an organization like S.H.I.E.L.D. that over-policed the country, how is that any different than Hydra, which was allowed to grow silently within the organization, using that proximity parallel to say, hey, these organizations are actually one in the same. It doesn't matter if you think you're on the side of good if you overstep people's civil liberties if you over police that's why captain america didn't agree with the sokovia accords but more at its core it's why he didn't agree with the helicarriers originally in winter soldier before he found out it was hydra in the first place it's why sam is so ready and easily empathizes with Carly Morgenthau. In that scene, he wasn't faking it. He actually understands where she's coming from, but that's why he used language to illustrate how she so readily sounded like a fascist and a supremacist herself when she so readily said, yeah, I'd kill them and I'd kill them again. Do the ends justify the means? He understood where she was coming from and agreed with her ideology, just didn't agree with the modus operandi in which she was getting it done, which takes us right back full circle to John Walker and why he decided he needed to take the super soldier serum because he needed to be able to keep up because in his mind that's the idea of being Captain America he did question it but went full force into it and now is in a position where he'll never be able to be Captain America ever again I love this episode I loved it I loved it it's been my favorite episode of Disney Plus by far uh, I loved WandaVision in its own right. I really thought that the first couple of episodes of Falcon the Winter Soldier, pretty necessary expose. I wish they had done some things differently. Like, why didn't we get a flashback scene of the original Captain America? Everybody wanted that. Uh, and maybe they spent a little too much time on exposition in the first two episodes. But hey, all that aside, it has been well worth it. And if this is only episode four out of six, I cannot wait for the next two episodes. Guys, give me all your thoughts down in the comments. Give me all your theories. What happens now with what should be US agent John Walker? Does he don the black and red the same way that when Captain America took off as Nomad, he donned the black? What happens to his character in the future of the MCU? Guys, let me know all your thoughts down below and quickly. Let's get into the giveaway stuff and announce a new winner for the Disney Plus subscriptions. We are still giving away a PlayStation 5 now at 900,000 subscribers. We just gave away one last week at 800,000. A 15-year-old kid ended up winning. Update on that. If you know the story, this kid didn't have a TV. This is going to be his first console. So he threw in a 55-inch 4K high-def TV. He received them both last weekend. And the update from his mom is that he has not come out of his room. And he just completed the story mode on Miles Morales. So again, congrats to that kid Grinch. Let's announce a new winner. Kirk Balderas for this comment here for the weekly Disney Plus subscription. Congrats. All you have to do is DM me on Instagram at I am fires or get at me on the back end of my channel under the about on my business email. We'll verify your account and get the subscription right out to you. Guys, it's that simple. All you have to do 
hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below because it's truly random. The more videos you comment on, the better chance you have of winning. The best way to keep up with the content here at the channel is to hit the notification bell with notifications turned on. And as always, if you appreciated today's video, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button. My name is Michael Roman. You can find me over on Instagram and Twitter at I am Fires. You can also find me on Spotify, YouTube, and all other original music platforms under the name All Fires. Thanks so much for checking out the channel, guys, and stick around. We'll be posting again real, real soon.